Let's be honest, the Canon 6D Mark II kinda sucks. And here's why. So just for starters, I wanna make everyone out there aware of how much the 6D Mark II is currently priced at. So right now on Amazon, you can buy this camera for $1,399. And I'm not saying this is a good or bad price, I'm just making sure you guys all know how much it's currently priced at. Because the price is probably the most important thing you have to consider when buying a camera. Now with the price out of the way, let's jump into the five reasons why you shouldn't buy the Canon 6D Mark II. Number one, there's no IBIS. Now for all of you that don't know what IBIS is, it stands for in-body image stabilization. And what that basically means is that there's image stabilization hardware built into the camera. So if you're shooting handheld and your camera has in-body image stabilization, you should notice that it takes away some of those jitters and shakes when you're shooting video. It's a little bit harder to notice when you're shooting photos, but it should allow you to slow down your shutter speed a little bit more rather than if you didn't have IBIS and still achieve a sharp, crisp photo. Anyways, that's IBIS and back when the 6D Mark II was released in 2017, I don't think a lot of other Canon cameras had IBIS. However, back in 2017, I'm pretty sure there was a few Sony, Fujifilm, Panasonic, and even Olympus cameras that had in-body image stabilization. On the other hand, brands like Canon and Nikon weren't really doing that at the time. I mean, when you look at the timeline of Canon DSLRs, from the time they first started creating DSLRs, all the way up to more recently when they stopped making them and started making mirrorless cameras, the 6D Mark II is a relatively new DSLR, at least for Canon. So when the 6D Mark II came out, it did upset a lot of people that it didn't have IBIS. And when you look at Canon's more modern cameras, a lot of them actually do have IBIS and are cheaper than the 6D Mark II. So it just makes sense to go with those newer cameras rather than this old timer right here. Number two, it can only do 6.5 frames per second for photos. So again, comparing this camera to other cameras released around the same time, there were other options out there that were faster than 6.5 frames per second. On top of that, going back to Canon's more modern cameras in the R system, they do have cheaper cameras than the 6D Mark II, once again, that are faster than 6.5 frames per second. I'm pretty sure Canon actually has some APS-C options for the R system that are faster than 6.5 frames per second as well. So that right there is saying a lot about how slow this camera is for photos. Not good. Number three, it can only shoot in full HD at 60 frames per second. Now don't get me wrong, I still think full HD 1920 by 1080 is still usable in today's world. Most people probably won't even be able to tell that you're shooting in full HD rather than some higher resolution like 4K or even 8K. But again, when the 6D Mark II came out, there was a lot of other cameras out there that could shoot in 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second maybe even 60 frames per second. And on top of that, they could also do 1920 by 1080 at 24, 30, 60, and even 120 frames per second. So the 6D Mark II was kind of limited and not really future-proofed for shooting video. I mean, it can't even shoot in standard HD at 120 frames per second. Overall, the video specs are kind of lacking. Number four, limited and clustered AF points. On the 6D Mark II, you only have 45 autofocus points, and on top of that, they're all clustered in the middle of the viewfinder. So if you plan on taking some photos with this thing off to the left or right of the frame, and that's on the very edge of the frame, then you're probably gonna have to do the focus and recompose method because you don't really have any autofocus points on the left or right side of the frame to use to focus on your subject. Some people might not see this as a huge issue. For instance, when I use this camera, it's not a big deal to me, but it is a little annoying. On top of that, if you do use the focus and recompose method and you're using a shallow aperture, when you go to recompose your subject after focusing, your subject might now be out of focus. Because with that razor thin depth of field, even moving your camera just a little bit like that might completely throw off your focus. And number five, dynamic range. Dynamic range is basically how well a camera can retain the highlights and shadows of an image. In other words, how well your camera can capture the details in the brightest parts of your image and the darkest parts of your image. And the dynamic range on the 6D Mark II is pretty bad. Not unusable, but still bad. For example, the camera I'm shooting on right now is the Canon SL2. It was released around the same time the 6D Mark II was, 
and it was priced at around 700 bucks, I wanna say. It's also an APS-C DSLR, and its dynamic range is better than the 6D Mark II. So that's pretty rough. A cheaper, more beginner-style camera versus a more expensive, professional camera. Doesn't really make sense. Also, another weird thing about this camera's dynamic range, most cameras perform better with dynamic range at lower ISOs. However, I'm pretty sure the sweet spot for dynamic range on the 6D Mark II is somewhere around 200 or 400 ISO. Not necessarily a bad thing, just a little weird. But I'd say back around this time, around 2017, Canon was doing a lot of weird things with their cameras. Things that left photographers and videographers going, what? Okay, I know that's five, but I got a bonus one for you. Number six, the autofocus system is outdated. Now for those that are invested in the Canon DSLR system and don't plan on transitioning over to the Canon mirrorless system yet, this isn't really a concern. Actually, for those people, the autofocus system in the 6D Mark II is pretty good. However, if you compare this camera to all the mirrorless options Canon offers nowadays, the autofocus doesn't really match up. Canon's AF system in their mirrorless cameras nowadays is just so good, it's hard to compete with. They have face and eye detect autofocus that locks on like that. And even in their super new mirrorless cameras, like brand spanking new, they're starting to implement things like animal detection and car detection and a bunch of other awesome autofocus features. So if you want a Canon camera with the most modern, newest, updated autofocus system, don't get the 6D Mark II. Instead, look at Canon's newer cameras and their mirrorless system. So those are the reasons why you shouldn't buy the 6D Mark II, but hold on because I do have a list of cameras that you should take a look at instead. Number one is the Canon RP. This camera is very similar to the 6D Mark II, and it basically has all the same features. However, it's packed into the Canon R system, and it has a little bit of a cheaper price tag too, at $999. The second camera on my list is the Canon R, and this one comes in at $1399. I'm pretty sure this camera was compared to the 5D series back when it was released. A few cool specs about this thing, it can shoot in 4K at 30 frames per second, has a 30.3 megapixel full frame sensor, and can shoot in C-Log for video. Number three is the Canon R8. As of right now, this camera isn't out yet, but it's supposed to be released on April 18th, and it should be priced around $1,499. Also, I think I've heard people say that this is supposed to be the replacement for the Canon R. A few notable specs of this camera, it has a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor, can shoot in 4K up to 60 frames per second, and has a recording limit of two hours. Pretty sick camera, I recommend checking it out. Okay, and last but not least, number four, the Canon R10. This camera's priced at $879. $9. Also, this is the only camera I listed that is an APS-C mirrorless camera. The rest of them are all full frame. But a few cool features on this camera, it can do 15 frames per second in photo mode, has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, and apparently has lightning fast autofocus. At least that's what it states on Canon's website. Okay, so overall, the 6D Mark II is basically outdated at this point. It doesn't have IBIS, limited photo and video features, and it's just not worth buying. Instead, I recommend looking at more modern cameras in the Canon R system that are priced similarly to the 6D Mark II. The RP, R, R8, and R10 are all great options to check out. All right, if you guys enjoyed this one and you wanna see more videos just like this one, subscribe to the channel by clicking right there. Thanks for watching, and always remember to capture great moments. Peace.